Nick Ashu here with the DMV. Has concluded. The DMV. Sean Parker along with Nick Allison. I always wanted to play volleyball. Cordova trying to take it out of the board. Hello and welcome to the Prep Zone. I'm Tyler Byram, joined with Nick Eilerson of the Washington Post. Nick, just me and you today. All right. Great to have you back on the show. Good to have, uh, good to have me on. Thanks for having me on there, Tyler. Mm -hmm. Also, yeah, we can start there. Yeah, already <laughs> getting started with already stumbling. <laughs> spring season. <laughs> yeah, getting started. Yeah, It's already here. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have in store for you today. Go ahead. We have two boys soccer recaps for you as well as the Rebel Run Sports guy sitting down with Nova Basketball head coach Michael Abel-Jabbar. Also, of course, we have another special interview with Westfield's Doug Awell, Tyler Scanlon, and Blake Francis coming off their big state championship. Also, where to watch us, of course, you can always watch us at dmvstream.com, on demand, and on Channel 10, Fairfax Public Access, as well as Red Apple 21. Lots of places to watch us here. And yeah. We'll go ahead and get started, but before we go into spring sports, let's go ahead and take a look at the dmvstream.com. Nova Challenge will be hosted at Marshall High School on April 10th. Take a look. It's the dmvstream.com Nova Challenge. The third annual installment of Northern Virginia's premier all-star basketball showcase event is expanding. This year's April 10th event will welcome the top seniors from Fairfax, Loudoun, Arlington, Prince William, and the City of Alexandria for an action-packed day. In addition to the two all-star games, the area's best public school basketball players will compete in a dunk contest and a three-point contest. Underclassmen will also have access to a developmental clinic hosted by our friends at Evolution Basketball. Now, not only has this year's event grown from one game to two, but by becoming the title sponsor of this event, DMVStream.com will be providing you, the viewers and fans, the exceptional state-of-the-art coverage you've come to expect from us. As the Mid-Atlantic's number one source for live sports broadcasting, well, DMVStream.com, we're going to broadcast this year's event live to computers, tablets, mobile devices, and we'll also make the replays available on demand on the internet as well as our relationships with local cable television access channels. DMVStream.com produces live broadcasts for professional, semi-pro, and amateur sporting events, as well as colleges, universities, high schools, AAU, and youth tournament organizations throughout the Mid-Atlantic. With a client list that includes ESPN, The Washington Post, Monumental Sports Network, CBSSports.com, USAFootball.com, USLacrosse.org, NCAA.com, the National Federation of High School Sports, Georgetown University, among others, Synthesis Multimedia Productions and DMVStream.com has emerged as the Mid-Atlantic's top provider of multimedia. Now, the DMVStream.com Nova Challenge, featuring Nova's premier basketball players on April 10th. You can find out more about that at DMVStream.com and NovaChallenge.com. We'll see you there. Welcome back inside the Prep Zone. Tyler Byram alongside with Nick Eilerson with you kicking off Season 3 of the Prep Zone at DMVStream.com. So let's go ahead and get started with some boys soccer matchup. First up, Nick, <clears throat> Lee versus West Potomac. Yeah, yeah, a little Conference 7 matchup between a team that didn't win a single game last year in Lee and a West Potomac team that a lot of people think is going to be very good this year. And they have, they've got a lot of firepower, so for good reason. But uh, Lee came out. Two goals in the first five minutes, just kind of laid it to him right away. Uh, Lee is, was also coming off a 7 nothing win over Annandale, so they're already looking very good. And uh, this, this game was, was a little bit back and forth after those initial first two goals. Uh, there was a six-minute stoppage time at halftime for some reason. Coaches were a little confused about that. Uh, so West Potomac was able to pull, was able to score a goal and pull another one back just before the half to make it 3-2. to two. And uh, Lee got up pretty quickly, 4-2. West Potomac scored again, and Andy Menza uh, finished them off with the, goal, with the late goal to preserve the 5-3 win for Lee. Uh, so really nice result for them. This is a Lee soccer team that has scored more goals through two games this year than all of last season. They didn't win a single game last year. I don't think they won a single game before that, but they're looking really strong early this season. As you can see, there's Andy Menza. Um, he is playing very well. This is his first year with this Lee program. He was, in, he was with the uh, SYC Strikers. The club team that uh, their coach decided to let his kids play high school this year. So a few, a few uh, schools in that area benefited, including South County and West Springfield 
and obviously Lee picked up a couple guys in Andy Menza and Chris McGann who are really helping this team come together. But it's not just that. They've got a lot of really strong juniors. It's the junior class that really makes this team go, including Andy, obviously, who's got six goals through two games. Unbelievable. Starts off the season with two hat tricks. Um, he's just part of this really strong junior class that is making Lee a force to be reckoned with this season. Yeah, I mean, how about those Lancers getting a big win over West Potomac this early in the season? I mean, this could have ramifications way on down the line for both these teams going forward. Yeah, I agree. And it's, it's an interesting case of Lee getting to play a different sort of schedule this year, which should help them out. Uh, last year, they played, I think, 12 of their 13 games or something like that against 6A schools. Now, Lee's a 5A school, so it was just a matter of the reclassification from 2013, playing, having some tricky ramifications for the last two or three seasons. But this year they get to play more traditional district opponents, meaning they get to play against more 5A schools, which should help them prepare for their district tournament and be better, better suit, have a better record going into the district tournament, get a better seed, and have a better shot at actually doing something in the postseason. So I think this year they get to play against like five or six uh, traditional district opponents like Edison, um, you know, Thomas Jefferson, a couple other schools like that mm -hmm. uh, in the regular season. That should help them out as well. So Lee... If they can beat schools in the 6A like West Potomac and Annandale so handily, then they should look really good in the 5A. Yep, well, thanks for that one, Nick. Uh, let's go ahead and swing over to another spring sport. Let's go ahead and talk about lacrosse and take a look at the DMVStream.com new exciting partnership with the LAC Sports Network, a 24-hour network dedicated to lacrosse. Take a look. What's up, lacrosse fans? I'm excited to announce our new partnership with LACSportsNetwork.com, a 24-hour digital media network dedicated to covering the game of lacrosse, delivering thousands of hours of original programming, including live professional, collegiate, and amateur games. Now, those of you that already know about Synthesis Multimedia Productions and our platform at DMVStream.com, you know that our group has become the Mid-Atlantic's dominant force in providing live streaming of pro, college, and local high school sports. Now, in this new partnership with LACSportsNetwork.com, we'll be bringing you, the viewers, unprecedented live coverage of the Mid-Atlantic's most notable high school lacrosse programs, with matchups that include teams like Gonzaga, Georgetown Prep, Landon, Loyola Blakefield, McDonough, Boys Latin, Hill Academy, St. Paul School, Culver, New Canaan, St. Stephen's St. Agnes, Collegiate School, and the Washington Catholic Athletic Conference Championship live from the University of Maryland. Now, in this series of 10 games, starting in early March, you can watch the best matchups live in HD with the state-of-the-art broadcast technology you've come to expect from us at Synthesis Multimedia Productions and DMVStream.com. Broadcasts will include a minimum of five HD camera angles, graphics, instant replay, live clock, live scoring, up to the minute stats, and a 15 person crew, including directors, producers, camera operators, play by play color, and sideline reporters, all dedicated to creating a television style broadcast experience that you can watch live right in the palm of your hand. To find out more about this project, go to lacsportsnetwork.com and start watching lacrosse right now. Welcome back to the Prep Zone. Truly, that is an exciting partnership. Already a lot of games that they've already broadcast to you. We'll make sure to go ahead and check those out. All right, continuing now with our weekend rewind, our second game recap, Briarwoods versus Herndon. Nick. Yeah, Briarwoods, Herndon. I was there last night for this one. Uh, it was one of those where you thought Briarwoods was just going to keep laying on more and more goals as the game went on because, you know, it started off a little bit even, but as the first half wore on, Briarwoods asserted its dominance more and more. And after they scored their first goal in the 20th minute, you just felt like the, the barrage is coming. The floodgates have been opened. But that wasn't the case. Herndon was strong on the, was their back line held up. Um, it, it ended up being almost a tie game at the end. Herndon really took it to him in the last, uh, actually, two minutes of the game. Finally got some shots on frame. Really tested uh, Briarwoods' keeper and almost came away with an equalizer at the end. So. Mm -hmm. Briarwoods was fortunate to uh, escape those last couple minutes with, with the one nil result, but uh, credit Justin Corlett for the lone goal. Ended up proving the difference in that 20th minute. It's a free kick from near midfield uh, taken by uh, Burt Dunham, the right back for Briarwoods, and uh, kind of floated over uh, Hernan's back line to the back post. Chris Little redirected it, and Justin Corlett one-timed it easily in the back of the net for the difference. So 
Uh, Briar Woods definitely looked like the stronger side in this one. Herndon has a lot of speed, but they don't quite have that overall talent that Briar Woods does with a, a few college commits, including UVA goalkeeper commits, Colin Shuttler, who actually plays, he's been playing forward. He's a goalie who is his senior year, he's going to have a little bit of fun. Uh, last night he played forward and he plans to do so for at least you know a bunch more games. I think they'll put him back in goal once the playoffs come around to kind of shore that up a little bit. But they've got a perfectly um, capable back up there in Micah Scott, and he, he played really well um, last night as well. So Briar Woods is looking strong. Yeah, Micah Scott only on the season has three goals against already three games in, uh, 20 saves yeah. so far. And, I mean, we want to talk about the offense a lot, but, I mean, the defense is awesome in getting it done Yeah, with Briar Woods. Yeah, and another guy I liked that, that stood out to me last night was, uh, let's see, Chandler Pointer. Senior midfielder for Briar Woods, um, had great pace, uh, really strong work rate. I mean, he was all over the field. I, I couldn't really tell what position he was playing because he was <laughs> everywhere. Um, but he did a great job tracking back, um, kind of held off Herndon on a couple of counter t counter attack opportunities. So Chandler Pointer is another one to look out for. Um, there's there's quite a few guys for Briar Woods though that look really good this year. They're a very well rounded group. Yep, they could definitely go. Uh, far away this season. Yeah, in the 5A, they're definitely uh, one of the state favorites in mm -hmm. Division 5A this year, I would definitely have to say that. So. Yeah, but we're talking about how they can make a run at the state championship. Let's go ahead and talk about a team that did win a state championship. Earlier, the guys from Rebel Run Sports got a chance to sit down and talk to some of the guys from the Westfield basketball program. So go ahead and take a look as they discuss their state title winning season. Hello, thank you, and welcome to the special edition of the Prep Zone. I'm Rob Giampapa, joined by Coach Doug Yule and Blake Francis from Westfield High School, here to talk about the school's first state championship run this year. Guys, how are we doing today? Great, man. Terrific. Terrific. Blake, I'm going to start with you. Tell me a little bit about the first couple games of the season. You had some football players that weren't on the team yet. How did that affect you as a player? Um, it affected me a lot, you know. Um, just had to become more of a leader, you know and lead those guys, um, and um, it was a new team, so, you know, just had to bring them in, you know, give them a little bit of that experience uh, being on varsity, but, you know, um, once the football players came back, you know, everybody got comfortable as a team. Perfect. Well, Coach, how happy were you when this guy transferred into Westfield? Oh, my goodness. Um, Blake is, um, Blake, his brother Brandon played for us, and Blake took the opportunity to go to O'Connell and, and played a lot at O'Connell, so it was when... I had to cut discussions with him and his dad about coming back. It was, man, when he said, hey, I'm in, I was <laughs> really excited. I'm sure you were. <laughs> I'm sure you were. Well, Blake, so at the beginning of the season, did you know, did you, know you kind of had to buy your time until the football players got back, or, or was it a little bit more of a struggle for you to get, to get going right there? Um, I think it was um, a, little bit, a little bit of a struggle, but, yeah. you know, um, we just got things going um, just in practice, and, you know, I think – Everything just took flow in that part, and I, um, I think that was really just the main part, you know, just everyone getting on the same track in practice, which would help, uh, help us later. So when everybody got back, the team was at full strength, how long did it take you to know that this could be a special year for the team? Um, right when we first practiced, when the football players came back, you know, we knew we, um, we had a goal, which was to get back um, into the state tournament and make a run. All right. Well, it's a long season. What was the toughest part of the year for you? I would have to say um, conference play. You know, that's the mid-season. That's the season where um, that's the time where you know, most teams, you know, get complacent. Thank you guys for that. Tyler Byron alongside with Nick Eilerson. Now it is time for a weekly fast forward. Only one game preview for you today in the boys soccer side. But we got Broad Run versus Tuscarora. Yeah, we got a uh, little conference 14 matchup. Actually, a rematch of the uh, 5A North Region Championship last year. This should be a good one on Friday. Um, this is a Tuscarora team that lost some talent from last year. I don't think they're nearly as strong as they were. Uh, the results so far prove that, but uh, it's you know you can't really gather too much in March. It's very early. Teams are tinkering with their lineups. Uh, Tuscarora tied Westfield, which was a surprise in the result. We thought they would have won that game, but like I said, we can't put too much into these early contests. So Tuscarora going up against Broad Run. Uh, Broad Run is definitely one of the top 10 teams in the area, I would say, as, as is Tuscarora, but I think Broad Run's a bit of a stronger side right now. The equalizing factor to this matchup, though, 
is that uh, Nolan Poritz, uh, Broad Run's best player, is still out with a groin injury, and he's going to be out at least another week. So I think that uh, could put them on a bit of a more level playing field. Nolan really controls the middle of the park while he's got a lot of skill, great touch. So having him out is going to hurt Broad Run in this one. But uh, I think Tuscarora, um, they, they've got a decent shot with Dennis Trujillo. He's, he's a good college commit for them. Diego Rodriguez, uh, Terrell Howard, they've got some good players. Uh, Wilder James is, is a player to watch for Broad Run uh, with Nolan out of this game. So look out for him. Look out for guys like uh, Junior Menza. Their left back is very strong. Um, you know, Broad Run's got a good crop of talent. Will Sherman at center back, he's a really reliable player. Um, you, you could go on and on, but uh, this, is loud, this is just indicative of the Loudoun County area that's got a lot of really good soccer teams this year. You've got uh, Broad Run, Tuscarora, Briar Woods, as we discussed earlier, Potomac Falls, Stonebridge. Uh, there's, there's a lot of good teams in that area to look out for this season. Yeah, and Broad Run, I mean, they, even without their top player, they have three guys that have scored three goals this season, including Wilder James. I mean, they're just... Yeah. They can score a lot, and they can score often, and, I mean, yeah. a good defense as well. Yeah, yeah, they're a well-rounded team for sure. So, um, yeah, like you said, a lot of firepower on both ends. I think it's going to be a good matchup on Friday. Okay, well, that's it for us today here in the studio. Right now we're going to send it off to the Rebel Run Sports Guys as they have another special interview with the head coach from Nova men's basketball team, newly founded men's basketball team, Michael Abjabar. So go ahead, take a look at that. That's all we got for you guys today. All right, good stuff. In, in 19 and 6, we, we, we had a really good run. Uh, disappointing into the season, lost in the first round of the playoffs in double overtime. A couple breaks didn't go our way, but, you know, basketball, that's how things go that's sometimes. Right, right, so. right. Well, tell, tell us a little bit about your team. You mentioned Samuel Taylor. I know that guy fills up the stat sheet pretty well. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he does it all. I think it was 18 points, 8 rebounds a game. Yes, sir. So Samuel Taylor is one of our, our guys. Our second leader scorer on the team was uh, Michael West. He was, um, he's from Maryland, with the high school of Friendly in Maryland. Um, and all of our guys, I think eight out of our nine guys are guys with local ties. Okay. Um, so Northern Virginia, D.C., um, a few Maryland guys here or there, but mostly Northern Virginia is, is what we target. But, uh, so Michael West came in at 15 points a game, second leading scorer on the team. He was the transfer from uh, junior college in Mississippi, and I actually found him in an open tryout one day. We had um, a post on Twitter that he saw open tryout came, right. and he played for five minutes, and, and I was like, oh, I got to have you. <laughs> come, come on down. Um, Another one of our guys is um, Addison Burgess. He averaged 10 points a game, six rebounds. Uh, he's a transfer from K-State. He didn't play over there, but uh, he's a, a freshman, played really well this year. Um, Doyle Boyd is one of our military guys. He was uh, in the Marine Corps. Um, he came to us, probably one of the, the most enjoyable guys I've ever coached. Just gritty, does everything you'd ever ask. You know, great attitude, 10 points. Uh, seven rebounds a game, like three assists, took multiple charges in multiple games. He's one yeah. of those guys that just, you know, you love to have. Right. Um, so that's just a rundown of, of some of our some of our players. Coach, what's your style of basketball? You guys have put up some big numbers this year. So if you're talking to kids potentially coming to play for you, what would you tell them? What kind of style? I mean, some of your games you put up 110, 120 points. Oh, yeah. Through the first, I think, six games of the season, we were up in the 110 average. So, I mean, w when we have the, the, the guys there, we press, we, we take, I know some coaches probably don't like to hear this, but we take fast shots. Like, I, I can't tell you the amount of times in the middle of a game I have to yell at the guy for not taking a shot. I, I, I've said that in a huddle. I said, how many coaches are going to tell you and yell at you because you're not shooting the ball? And then he comes out at halftime and scores the first, like, 10 of 12. I was like, see, I told you. Right. You know what I mean? And but that style is important because a lot of these kids, you, you want them to be seen by other colleges. So. And, and that's one of my philosophies. So if I have a team that averages 75 points a game, you're going to have one guy at 15, another guy at 12, another guy at 10. And maybe the numbers aren't there to, eye, to catch some of these coaches' eyes, but right. if I'm averaging 110 points a game, I, got, I have one guy averaging 24, 18, 15. Right. I have multiple guys with 30-point games this, this year. And, you know, it's, it's fun basketball. Right. As long as we're winning, as long as they're taking what I consider a quality shot and, and playing good defense, you know, you still want to have a little fun out there. So right. I, I encourage guys to, you know, get, get your shots up. Yeah. 
Well, you now we know you like to press and you like to take quick shots. What else? What else do you like to do as a coach? What, what's a little more of your coaching philosophy and your style of in your style of basketball? Um, I think the main thing that we try to do, especially in practices, is really teach guys and put an emphasis on why we do things. So really explaining, breaking down to, to guys. It's like instead of just telling them, oh, this is what you're supposed to do. I want them to think about it. Oh, you're supposed to do this because of X, Y, and Z. And it kind of, you know, rings a bell in their head. Oh, that makes sense. You know, a, right. a little bit more than just saying, okay, I want you to, you know, you, you're cutting the screen off like this, but they don't understand why. Right. You cut a screen off like this because you don't want a guy to turn the corner and it puts the whole defense out of position, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, are you more Mike D'Antoni running gun or are you more Jerry Tarkanian running gun? I, I would say, uh, that, that's a good question. I would probably say Jerry Tarkanian. I think I'm more with, with Mike D'Antoni. He had one guy like a Steve Nash who right. kind of dominated the ball, set everybody up. I'm, I am share the wealth so I got my five men on the perimeter with the basketball I ball movement you know we make extra passes and because you know that type of thing is contagious on the basketball court one yeah. guy makes an extra pass and the entire bench lights up you know what I mean so like that kind of thing it really like this year was one of the strongest uh, team bonds that we had and I think it really carried over to, to help us win and as I mean we've had the best record we had in school history this year at 19 and 6 right. but guys were really selfless with each other like it didn't necessarily matter who scored because like I said we've had multiple guys with with 25 30 point games we've had multiple guys with 10 plus rebound games um, you know different things like that so it's, it was a really good atmosphere this year around the program now as far as your press goes are you, are you press full all game you press full court, you press half, what do you, how do you do it? We, we like to mix it up. That's one of the big things uh, my assistant brought to the mix. He said, I like to keep other coaches guessing. So we'll throw full court press, half court press. We'll throw a full court. It's kind of just like a dummy just to slow you down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, we'll trap corners. We'll, you know, we'll throw a zone at you. We've done so many things this year. I really give the guys a lot of credit that, that they've been able to keep up with, with all the defenses and different adjustments that we make in-game. Right. All right, tell everybody who doesn't know a little bit about, you know, where you guys are, where people are wondering, where's the gym at? Where do you guys <laughs> play your games at? What's the mascot of Nova? You know, kind of introduce people who haven't heard of you guys yet to what you got going on and coming this, you know, next season where we're going to be out there recording and broadcasting games for you. Okay, so Northern Virginia uh, Community College actually has um, five campuses. There's Annandale, Alexandria, Loudoun, Manassas, and Woodbridge. And then there's a medical campus um, in Arlington, so six total. And you can take classes at any one of the campuses, but the, the, the main campus is located in Annandale, um, right off a of Little Turnpike, Little River Turnpike, and um, 495. Um, that's where all the games are played, practices, and everything like that. Um, but the, f the funny thing is, because we're, we're just getting started, um, a lot of people in the school still don't even realize we have a basketball team. So we're really trying to, to press that. Like, this is actually, we just got a new mascot this year, the Nova Nighthawk. Okay. Just got a new logo. Right. Um, which, is, which is pretty cool, which is going to be on our, all our stuff next year. Yeah. Um, it's actually really exciting. So. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you. The, the popular thing now in basketball is the three-point shot. Everybody wants to be Steph Curry. How do you feel about the three-point line and the three-point shot in basketball? My assistant does not agree with this, but I am <laughs> fully on with that. I, <laughs> being a guy who shoots a lot of three-pointers yeah. myself, like that is pretty much the only caveat to being able to play for me. You've got to be able to shoot. Because I, I would say one, only one guy on our team averaged under 30 percent from three this year and everyone has the green light to shoot because I feel like it just opens up the floor a lot more for guys and it's it's hard because my coaching philosophy defensively if there's a guy who can't shoot we're going to sag off of him we're going to let you do what you want to do and that clogs the paint and guys can't do what they want to do but for me I mean we go five out and and at this level also sometimes it's harder to attract like a true big man sure because mm -hmm. you know they're they're really hard to come by. Right. You know, some big school somewhere is, is going after a big man. So we play a lot of wings, a lot of same size guys, 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", spread the floor, interchangeable parts, things like that. So th that's the kind of 
guy that you know thrives in my system. Guys that can shoot threes. Yeah, we, we my my leading scorer Samuel Taylor. He I think in the final we had 17 three attempts wow. in our final <laughs> games. So I I might be the only uh, coach in the country that, as a guy is coming down the court. I just tell him I was like that's far enough. Go ahead and get it up. <laughs> <laughs> can any of them outshoot you at the three point line? They've tried before. I, maybe nowadays since I'm not playing as much, but I I've. Uh, I've beaten a couple guys in practice in previous years. For uh, I told them, we joke around. I said, okay, you'll we, play me for your meal then on the next game. And a couple right. guys went hungry a couple nights. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, there's big-time college basketball in this area, whether it be Georgetown, Maryland, you know, Mason. Is there an opportunity for you guys to scrimmage maybe some of these teams? And, you know, that would kind of help get the name out a little bit more. Um, at this point, we haven't scrimmaged any Division One competition. Now we have uh, done exhibition games against Division Two teams. Okay. okay. So we played uh, Lincoln Community Co uh, sorry Lincoln um, College in Pennsylvania, the CIAA school. <laughs> we played Davis and Elkins in an exhibition game before. Um, I haven't really established any relationships with the Division One teams, and I don't necessarily know if we're at that level yet. But I mean, I'd love to take a shot. Yeah. You know, I'm. I'm the kind of type of guy that's not scared of anybody on the court. You that's know, for if, you, if, George Mason. If, if you come and beat us by 40, I, I'm happy. To, I'll, I'll take the L, but you know, just we'll know see who's the real green and gold around here. <laughs> We're going to come out and compete and, and give you guys a really good game. So, Excellent. Well, uh, tell us a little bit going into next year. You're, obviously, you got to hit the recruiting track. How do you go about that? Where do you start from here? So, like I said, the majority of our guys come from Northern Virginia and D.C., um, and the kind of guy I look for is like one of the three things I, I, I said before. So either um, A, a guy who probably didn't take his grades, his classes as seriously as he should have in high school and maybe can't, you know, get into the university of his choice. Um, a guy who might have had uh, just been a late bloomer like myself, like I was a super late bloomer. Um, I didn't even play in high school. Oh, wow. Right. Mm. So, like, I was really late along the track. I didn't really hit my stride until, like, I was 18, 19. I haven't so. even bloomed yet. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, like I said, you know, because of the size of the school and the location, we get a lot of guys who went somewhere else, didn't work out how they like, and then they'll contact me and be like, hey, coach, you know, I was at such and such school. Wasn't really a good fit for me. I'm coming to Nova next year. What can I do to, to try out for the team? So the combination of those three... It, it really works out well for us because you kind of get to pick and choose guys that are, are really good fits for the program and guys that you can help out go ahead and get back to that four-year level if they were there before and help them find the right fit. Well, Coach, thank you so much for joining us on another special edition of the Prep Zone. I'm John Moore, Rob G and Papa. Good luck to you next season. You can see us on rubberrunsports.com and dmvstream.com.